Now, the recent outbreak of violence in KwaZulu-Natal and Gauteng has worsened conditions of some poverty-stricken residents in areas. In these areas, our Social Development Minister, Lindu Ezulu, has told the National Assembly that some of the gains made in improving lives in vulnerable communities have been reversed by the recent violence. She says that her department has requested additional funding from the Solidarity Fund to address food shortages. Last month, President Cyril Ramaphosa said food packages would be provided to help affected families. To date, over 12,000 food parcels have been issued in Gauteng. In KwaZulu-Natal, tens of thousands of people have been provided with food relief as well as vouchers. The departmental interventions include the provision of food through center of through center-based feeding program, including early childhood development, ECD facilities, community nutrition development centers, CNDCs, drop-in centers, home community-based care, and old age homes. These are funded by the department to implement food-related interventions, among others. All parties in the House agree that the violence has had a devastating effect on communities already in distress. The problems are also worsened by the COVID-19 pandemic. It is important to highlight that the closure of even one of our social development offices brings so much distress to those that are in need. The long-lasting impact of this destruction to social development and SASA clients is immeasurable. Destruction of the post offices, together with hundreds of ATMs, have left thousands vulnerable, unable to access their life-saving grants, the impact on the most vulnerable was, and still is, unthinkable. There was no food on the shelves, shelves, shops were closed. Closed SASA offices left many without grants. Government must introduce a basic income support for the poor to address the chronic and racialized poverty in this country. The estimated cost to repair infrastructure in schools and the offices of social development in SASA exceeds 100 million. MPs say further interventions are needed, especially at schools damaged during the protests. They have requested a comprehensive security plan for all schools. Abra Barbia, SABC News, Parliament. This is August 2021 data, data shows that uh, all baskets increased and that all baskets are now at their highest level since tracking started in September 2020. According to the Household Food Basket Survey that forms part of the Household Affordability Index created by the Peter Maritzburg Economic Justice and Dignity Group, massive food price hikes hit the poor in the August of 2021 household food Baskets for Johannesburg, Durban and Peter Maritzburg where most of the rioting happened. Well, to get a better sense of uh, the dire situation, we are now joined uh, by Programme Coordinator at the Peter Maritzburg Economic Justice and Dignity Group, uh, Mr Mervyn Abrahams. Thanks very much indeed for joining us and welcome to the programme. Uh, good evening, Peter. Thank you for having us and good evening to all your viewers. All right, let's start by looking at this index and how it measures, uh, what it measures. So essentially, Peter, we, uh, we're measuring the cost of a basket of 44 basic foods. These would include foods such as maize meal, rice, sugar, oil, salt, uh, bits of chicken, uh, tomatoes, potatoes, onions, bread, margarine, etc. The basic food that an ordinary low-income household would purchase. And we, we track the prices of this across about 40 uh, uh, retail stores in the Johannesburg, Peter Maritzburg, Durban, Cape Town, as well as in Springbok. And what the results show for the month of August in comparison to the month of July, is that the cost of this basket had spiked by 161 rand in Durban, which is a 3.9% increase month on month, by about 143 rand in Johannesburg, which is a 3.4% increase, and 128 rand and 33 cents 
which is a 3.2% increase in the areas around Pietermaritzburg. So our basket of 44 very basic foods now stand at 4,241 rand and 11 cents. That's quite a remarkable increase in just one month. Um, what does that then tell us about, is it inflation? Is it just shortages caused by violence? What, what do we know why we're we seeing such a spike? So it's a combination of factors we, we, we analyze. Um, firstly, the unrest caused a blockage in the system which, allowed, which had to be reopened. And so reconnecting the supply lines have meant that in certain cases there were greater demand than there was supply. And of course, that also pushed up the prices. At the very same time, we also saw a massive spike in the petrol price. And the increase in petrol prices has a direct impact on food prices. And so, in a sense, it was the unrest, the fuel prices, uh, uh, and some of the other factors that have caused uh, these tremendous spikes over just one month period. All right. I'm a little concerned about the supply demand curve because what it suggests is that shops are putting up the prices for no other reason than they can. So, so we have seen in the immediate aftermath, uh, a few days after the unrest, we saw immediately even greater spikes around very basic foods such as bread and milk. Uh, in the city of Durban, um, a loaf of bread went for 35 rand in some stores. And of course, that was blatant price gouging. Um, but that situation has kind of stabilized now. Uh, what we have seen in this price spikes are really factors uh, such as increased cost with the logistics, for instance, the trucks that were burned, that had to be recouped. Uh, uh, stores had to add extra cost in terms of having to restock and rebuild. And farmers had suffered massive losses during the period of the unrest. Um, so all of those things contributed to these increases. But Peter, we also have to remember that not only are we seeing these massive spikes in these areas, what is also true is that many of the stores that were burnt down have not yet been rebuilt, which means that low-income households have to travel much further to do their shopping, mm. and therefore there are additional transport taxi costs that uh, are included in the household budget over the past two months. And of course, the consequence is um, wages are not going up. In fact, unemployment is going up. And that means a lot of these households are having to pick less of those items in that food basket. Exactly. When mm. we look at, for instance, a national minimum wage, then we see that the national minimum wage this year increased by 4.5%. And when we look at the household expenditure, then we look at electricity increased by between 14 and 15 percent. Transport costs have increased by 7 percent. And our food basket year on year are now in excess of 10 percent. So actually the expenditure, the inflation on basic expenses are increasing much higher than the wage increases that are coming into mm -hmm. households and that is causing a major affordability crisis. Are you satisfied with the interventions that uh, government is uh, trying to put into place to, to assist and help these uh, desperate households? So, so we welcome the fact that government immediately uh, uh, introduced the, or brought back rather the 350 around the social relief grant. It is very, very little. It will barely cover the increased cost of food and transport, but will assist households as an intermediary and as a relief measure. What we do, however, need is we have to confront the massive levels of inequality and poverty in our economy. It is an economic question. And unless we can resolve and, 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 and spur on economic growth, 
we are never going to get out of this trap of the affordability crisis that households face. Yesterday, I had a conversation about how climate change was affecting children, and uh, we often don't focus on the children and they, how they are being affected by some of these uh, socio-economic dynamics. I guess they are very vulnerable, particularly vulnerable, uh, when you see a basket of food increasing in cost, because more than us, their nutrition is essential, isn't it, in, when they're growing up? Exactly, Peter. And one of the factors, even before COVID, even before the unrest, we already had the situation of almost about 25%, a quarter of our children under the age of five are stunted. Now, that is a remarkable indictment on the South African economy because it condemns 25% of our population, of our future workforce, into a situation of where they are mentally affected precisely because of not having sufficient nutrition in, uh, in their diets. And, and, and so it has economic implication because it will impact eventually when these young people enter the workforce, it will impact our ability to grow our economy in a new uh, a, a, a type of economy that the, that the globe or that the world is going into. Mervyn Abrahams, we're going to have to leave it there, but thank you very, very much indeed for tracking this important data. And let's hope that uh, those that are able to uh, effect change can do so and do it quickly. Thank you so much. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, and thanks to your viewers. All right. Okay, so some very distressing news there, that the basic food baskets are increasing uh, significantly, a number of factors, including recent violence, uh, inflation, and uh, other things uh, causing that stress and strain on uh, particularly low-income families.